So I picked this up a couple months ago at an antique store in my town, and they were trying to sell this as an occasional table. And you won't be surprised to find out the price was dropped on it pretty drastically. I actually purchased this with the assurance that I had a truck in the parking lot and could take it home immediately. <laughs> I have an amazing sharpening system that can sharpen my tools up to, I think, a thousand grit, but this thing is just so cool looking. It's not big enough for me right now, so I need to actually make this dimension longer. And the other thing is it's got a crank handle on this side uh, and a foot pedal that doesn't actually work on this side. I've actually been super nervous about starting this project and I keep putting it off just because I really don't know what I'm doing. It's like what Jimmy always says, the hardest part of getting done is getting started. two screws. Well, I mean, you can see there's a lot of me, so the wheel needs to be here. So these beams need to be quite a bit longer than they are. So I got this wood a couple of years ago. They were the flooring for some cars on a locomotive. I don't know, cars that attach to the choo-choo. He sold it to me as mahogany, but I, I, don't, I don't know if it is. Um, regardless of what it is, the dimensions are good and it's super rusty. just binded in the cut, which is super scary. Yeah. Yay, we get to make another one of those cuts. So that sound is what happens when the wood moves. Well, it's over the top of the blade. And it was actually binding in the cut there. Certainly a little scary. Took a couple passes to the thickness planer. I don't want to get rid of too much of what makes these boards interesting, but I think should be able to actually cut joinery into them, which um, is a good thing too. If you're wondering, I really don't know what I'm doing. This isn't, this isn't any skill I've ever tried before. So I'm just going to try to mimic what's here. First step is to hog away some of the material in this mortise. Got a half inch bit in the drill press. Table's tilted to 25 degrees. Luckily, there's only four of these angled mortises and this is the third one. What you're left with is a hole that is mostly hogged out, but definitely needs some cleaning up. My pride wants to tell you how easy that was, but in truth, it was a lot of work. Um, but one down, three to go. So 
So then these mortises are for this cross beam. And while they are bigger, they're also straight, which should make this a whole heck of a lot easier. Feeling a sense of deja vu. I'm definitely feeling like I've done this before. This process is actually kind of therapeutic. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's exhausting. It takes a really long time and my hands hurt. But it's also kind of cathartic. And I've turned it upright. I'm gonna let the glue dry like this because the feet are in the right position. And once that glue dries, we can do some bracing. I don't want to mess with this too much, but that handle is still going to get in my way. And in a one-man shop, it has very little use for me. I also don't want to make a ton of changes to this device. Looking to protect yourself or deal some damage? Steel's good, gummies are better. Do you know what my father does? What you hunting? Never mind, I don't want to know. We've got small weapons too. I don't claim to be the best blacksmith. I'm not even on the list.